Hello guys. This video lecture we will talk about the nomenclature of alkynes according to IPEG system. Alkynes are unsaturated hydrocarbons and such molecules are characterized by the presence of a carbon-carbon triple bond in their structure. The general formula for alkynes is CnH2n-2. So anywhere you see a carbon-carbon triple bond in a molecule, you can call that molecule as an alkyne if this functional group is the parent functional group. Just like in case of alkanes and alkenes, we use a prefix for the number of carbon atoms in the longest chain for alkynes too. But in this case, the name ends with Y and E. We will apply IUPIC rules for naming alkynes with the help of some simple examples and you can apply the same rules to name certain complex molecules as well. So the first and basic rule, of course, is to select the longest possible chain that contains the carbon-carbon triple bond. Now, because in alkynes, the triple bond is the parent functional group, so you have to select the longest chain that contains the carbon-carbon triple bond. It means that you cannot ignore the triple bond in this case. And then, if that longest chain with the carbon-carbon triple bond has some substituents, you should identify the number and types of substituents that are present on that chain. And then, of course, you have to number the carbon atoms in the chain, and you can do this by starting the numbering from that side so as to give lowest possible position to the triple bond. Remember that the triple bond is the parent functional group in this case, so you have to start numbering from an end that gives the triple bond the lowest possible position. But if the triple bond falls at the same position from both ends, then of course you have to take into account the position of the substituent to start the numbering from one end. And then, of course, you have to start numbering from that end so as to give the substituents the lowest possible position. Just like in alkenes, the position of the triple bonds need to be mentioned. And now you can name the molecule as follows. As you know from the nomenclature of alkenes and alkanes, that the name of a molecule is made up of certain small fragments. So let's see what fragments make up the complete name of an alkyne. And the order is the same as we have discussed for alkenes and alkanes. First, you have to mention the positions and the names of the substituents, which of course are the lowest priority fragments in all molecules. So first you have to mention the positions and names of all the substituents. Then you have to write the prefix for the number of carbon atoms in the longest chain, that is eth, prop, but, pent, hex, and so on. And then, of course, you have to mention the position of the triple bond. And finally, because this is an alkyne, you end the name with Y, N, E. Now, let's see some examples. We start off with a very simple example here. You can see this molecule here. And here you can see the carbon-carbon triple bond. So we have one, two, three, and four carbon atoms in this chain, in this only chain possible for this molecule, which has this carbon-carbon triple bond. And now we can say that it belongs to the alkyne class of molecules. Now, because we have a very small chain that is uh, that contains four carbon atoms, and this molecule does not have any substituents attached to the chain, so it's a simple alkyne. So you have to mention the position of the triple bond. And you already know from the rules that you have to start numbering the carbon atoms in the chain from that end so as to give lowest possible position to the triple bond. So if you start from this end here from the left, the triple bond falls at one, two, three. But if you start from this end, this chain starts with the triple bond and the position of the triple bond is one in this case. So obviously you have to start from this end and so it is one two, three, four. This is how you number the chain. 
and because the chain contains four carbon atoms the prefix but is used and because it belongs to the alkyne class the name ends with y and e so it's a one butyne or you can write it as but hyphen one hyphen y and e you can write it in both ways let's see another example and now you can see that we have a branched chain in this case first you have to select the longest chain that contains the triple bond so we start counting the carbon atoms from here one two three four five one two three four five so we have two chains with similar number of carbon atoms and similar number of substituents as well the next step is to number the carbon atoms so obviously you have to start from here so as to give lowest possible position to this triple bond so this is one two three four and five and now at position four we have a methyl substituent so as we discussed in the previous slide that while naming the molecule first you have to mention the position and the name of the substituent so at position four we have a methyl substituent so it's four methyl one pentine because the chain contains five carbons so the prefix pent is used and the name ends with y and e or you can write it as four methyl pent one i now we have a molecule that has a triple bond in the chain and if you count the number of carbon atoms in the longest chain we have one two three four five six carbons in the chain with a methyl substituent the next step is to number the carbon atoms and this is interesting because if you start numbering from this end we have the triple bond at three if you start numbering from this end we have the triple bond at three again so as the rule says if the triple bond falls at the same position from both ends then if you have substituents you take the position of the substituents into account to number the carbon atoms in the chain in this case because the triple bond falls at the same position from both ends we have to take into account the position of the substituents so from here the this methyl substituent is at two and from here it is at five so obviously you have to start numbering from the left hand side so at two we have the methyl substituents and at three we have the triple bond and the chain contains six carbons so the prefix hex is used for this molecule here we have another example first step is to select the longest chain so let's see what chains do we have one two three four five six seven eight one two three four five six seven one two three four five six seven and this one also has eight carbon atoms so we have the longest chain with eight carbons then you have to select that chain that contains the maximum number of substituents so if you select this chain here it has three substituents uh, an ethyl substituent and two methyl substituents and if you select this chain here right here again it has two methyl and an ethyl substituent so you can select any of these two chains with one two three four five six seven and eight carbon atoms now to number the carbon atoms first you have to see the position of the triple bond so from here one two three four one two three four so for both hands we have this triple bond at position four now you have to take into account the position of the substituents so from left hand side these substituents fall at two three and six and from here they fall at three six and seven so if you take a sum of the positions of the substituents the one that gives the lowest sum will be the direction of the numbering so here we have the substituent at two three and six so two plus three plus six is equal to eleven and from here they are at three six and seven so three plus six plus seven is equal to sixteen so obviously from left hand side 
these substituents have the lowest positions. So we start numbering from here. So at position two and three, we have the methyl substituents. So we write two, three dimethyl. But before that, we need to mention the ethyl substituent because it comes prior to methyl in alphabetical order. So at six, we have the ethyl substituent. At two and three, we have the dimethyl substituents. And then because it has eight carbon atoms in the chain, and at position four, we have the triple bond. So it's oct for ion or for octine. So this is how you can number a complex or you can name a complex alkyne molecule with different substituents. Now here we have a molecule that has a triple bond which falls at the same position from both ends as you can see here one two three four one two three four and it has two substituents a methyl and an ethyl substituent in the longest chain or attached to the longest chain now from left hand side this methyl substituent falls at three and the ethyl falls at six so the sum is 3 plus 6 is equal to 9 and from right hand side these substituents again fall at 3 and 6 which is equal to 9 so in this molecule the triple bond or the position of the triple bond as well as the positions of these two different substituents cannot decide from which direction you should start numbering or from which end you should start numbering now what to do in this case, in such cases, you have to follow the alphabetical order because from here, methyl is at 3 and from here, ethyl is at 3. So in alphabetical order, ethyl comes first or E comes first. So you have to start numbering from this end so as to give ethyl the lowest possible position. And while writing the name, again, you have to follow alphabetical order. So this is 3-ethyl, 6-methyl, 4-octyne or oct for ion. Now you can have molecules with more than one triple bonds. So if you have more than one triple bonds, then you have to number the carbon atoms in that chain so as to give lowest possible position to all the triple bonds present in the molecule. We have discussed the same rule for alkenes as well. And if you remember, in alkenes, we change this prefix but, pent, hex to buta, penta, and hexa. The same rule applies here. If you have more than one triple bond in the chain, then these prefixes are modified or they're changed from but to buta, pent to penta, hex to hexa, hept to hepta, etc. And then you have to add another prefix before the suffix ion, and that is for the number of triple bonds present in the chain. So for two triple bonds, we add di, for three triple bonds, we add tri, and for four triple bonds, we add tetra. Now again, if these triple bonds fall at the same position from both hands, then of course you have to take into account the position of the substituents for numbering the carbon atoms in the chain. Let's see some examples. So we have a very simple example here. You can see one, two, three, four carbon atoms in the chain and we have two triple bonds. So it's a, a chain with four carbon atoms. And because we have more than one triple bond, but becomes buta. So it's a buta di ion. But of course, you have to mention the position of the triple bonds. And you can see from both ends, these triple bonds fall at the same position. So they are at one and three from both ends. So it's a buta one, three di ion or one, three buta di ion. Here we have a longer chain with five carbon atoms and two triple bonds. And in this case, you have to start numbering from this end. So it's to give lowest position to these triple bonds. So they are at one and three again. But in this case, they are, uh, this molecule is penta diion. And it's a one, three penta diion or penta one, three diion. 
This molecule has three triple bonds and a substituent as well. Count the number of carbon atoms. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven carbon atoms are there with a substituent in this case. Now, as you know that substituents have the lowest priority. So first you have to take into account the position of the triple bonds to number the carbon atoms in the chain. So from left hand side, they are at one, four, and six. And from right hand side, they are at one, three, and six. So one, four, and six, the sum is equal to 11. And one, three, and six, the sum is equal to 10. You have to start numbering from this end. So it's a triene, it's a hepta triene, and the triple bonds are at one, three, and six. So it's a one, three, six hepta triene. But in this case, we have a substituent as well at position five. That is a methyl substituent. It's a five methyl one, three, six hepta triene. Here we have another example with two triple bonds. And first you have to select the longest chain. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10 carbon atoms in the longest chain. And this chain has a methyl and an ethyl substituent. The triple bonds fall at the same position from both ends. You can see one, two, three, four, and six. One, two, three, four, and six. And it's the same, similar to the molecule we have discussed before for such a rule. Uh, the triple bonds fall at the same position. Then you have to take into account the position of the substituents. So from left hand side, they are at three and eight. And from right hand side, they are at three and eight. So substituents also fall at the same position. Then you have to follow the alphabetical order. So from right hand side, the substituent ethyl comes first in alphabetical order. So in this case, we will start numbering from the right hand side. And so it's three ethyl, eight methyl, and at position four and six, we have the two triple bonds. So it's a four, six deca for the number of carbon atoms in the chain. And because we have two triple bonds, so we write a prefix di before ion. It's a four, six deca di You can also have molecules with both double and triple bonds present in the longest chain. Now, in this case, the parent name belongs to the triple bond or the alkynes because double bonds or alkenes have lower priority as compared to the triple bonds while writing the name. But for numbering, you have to take care of the positions of both triple, double and triple bonds. If they occur at the same position from both ends, then of course you have to start numbering from a side that gives the double bond the lowest position. But if they are a different position, then you can start from a position that gives either of the two the lowest possible position. As I mentioned before, if double and triple bonds occur at the same position from both ends, the numbering is done from the side which gives the double bond the least position. The parent name will still belong to the triple bond because it has higher priority. But in such molecules, because you have to mention the double bond before the triple bond as it is of lower priority, so you will not write the suffix ene -E for the double bond. In fact, you will write en eliminating the last e from the suffix of the double bond, while yne -E is written in full. You will, you will understand this with the help of an example that we will discuss in the next slide. So we have this molecule here with a double and triple bond. First, you have to select the chain that this molecule has only one chain. So the next step is to number the carbon atoms. From this end, the double bond is at two, but from this end, the triple bond is at one. So we start numbering from the right hand side, one, two, three, four, five, and six. So at position four, we have a double bond, and at position one, we have a triple bond. And this chain has six carbon atoms, one, two, three, four, 
4, 5 and 6. So it's a hexene ion. It's an alkenion, but in this case, it's a hexene ion. And you have to mention the positions of both double and triple bonds. So at position 4, we have a double bond. So it's a 4 hexene. And you can see no E here. And at position 1, we have the triple bond. So it's 1 ion. Or you can write it in this form as well. Hex for the number of carbon atoms in the chain. Then at position 4, we have the double bond. So 4 in and then 1 iron. Here in this case, you can see that from this end, the triple bond is at 2 and the double bond is at 5. So 2 plus 5 is equal to 7. From this end, the double bond is at 1. And the triple bond is at 4. So 1 plus 4 is equal to 5. So we start numbering from here. This is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So we have the double bond at 1 and the triple bond at position 4. In this case, again, the parent name belongs to the alkyne, but numbering will start from the double bond bond side so it's one hexene or hex one in for iron here you can see that both the double bonds and triple bonds fall at the same position from left and right hand side from right hand side double bond is at two from left hand side the double triple bond is at two in this case numbering will start from this end from the right hand side from the side which gives the double bond the lowest position so at position two we have a double bond and at position seven we have a triple bond and this molecule has nine carbon atoms in the chain so it's a two known e without e and seven i in is written without e in this case or you can write it as known to e seven i This is the last example and you can see that we have two double bonds and a triple bond in this case so again you have to take care of the positions of all the double and triple bonds so from left hand side the triple bond is at two from right hand side the double bond is at two but again you have to take care of the positions of all the double and triple bonds so you take the sum from left the triple bond is at two Double bond is at 5 and 7. So 2 plus 5 plus 7 is equal to 14. From right hand side, the positions are 2, 4 and 7. So 2 plus 4 plus 7 is equal to 13. So from right hand side, the sum is the lowest. So we start from here. So at 2 and 4, we have the double bond. At position 5, we have a methyl substituent. And at position 7, we have a triple bond. So it's a 5-methyl 2,4 for the double bonds. And this chain has 9 carbons. And as you know that if we have more than 1 double bond, so this known becomes nona. So it's 2,4 nona diene. And at position 7, we have a triple bond, so 7 ion. Or you can write it as 5-methyl nona 2,4 diene 7 Iron. So this is how you can name alkynes or molecules with triple bonds and double bonds both in the longest chain that is the alkenes. These are some of the simple examples you can follow the same rules to name some of the complex alkynes or alkenes. Thank you so much. See you next time with some more video lectures in organic chemistry.